Hey guys, real quick before the video starts, I wanted to remind you about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Both sales are running right now. To find out more information, visit AmmoNYC.com. Check out the homepage. There'll be different codes on there. Make sure you use them upon checkout. Now, without further ado, check out the Mike Musto 996 restoration episode. Hey guys, it's now 3.45 in the morning and I'm packing up the car, heading down to JFK to hop a flight to LAX to go see Matt Farah and Mike Musto. Musto has a 2002 996 C4S. What makes this extra special is I'm gonna be doing it with my two closest detailing buddies, Kevin Brown and Derek Bemis. So we got a lot going on this episode. That and a whole lot more on Drive and Protect. Musto arrived at WCCS in his brand new slash used 996 Porsche. So years ago when Larry first bought his 964, I drove that car. And I was like, oh yeah, this is really nice because all oh, my muscle cars or anything. And he's like, if you ever get a 911, he goes, I promise you. He goes, I will detail it. He goes, don't let anybody touch it except for me. I'm now in LA with Larry and he's going to detail my car. And I'm very excited about this. So I am here to collect. I am. I'm here to collect. Soon thereafter, Kevin and his brand new monster truck, that thing is awesome. And of course, Derek, AKA the Hair Bemis, arrived a few minutes afterwards to help detail Musto's car. So we were all there and ready to go. At first inspection, the Porsche needs some major love, but clearly someone's gotten to it first and burned through a bunch of the paint. Likewise, the PPF was very old and definitely worn out. Plus there was a huge deep scratch on the back. So this wasn't like a simple polish and coat type job. You'll see later in the episode as we're banging our heads against the wall, this project would go down as one of the top five most difficult paint corrections and details we've ever done together. Unlike the Fast and Furious Acura Integra we polished a month later at Matt's WCCS, that had single stage paint, it was ridiculously soft, yet incredibly easy to work with. So that was kind of a difference between the 996 and of course this one. So make sure you subscribe to be notified when the Radwood and the Ja Rule Fast and Furious episode airs very soon. Now this line you're seeing right here is a classic burn through mark, usually found on edges of the paint or corners of the panel. Now your machine that you're using, all the force, all of its weight is usually directed towards one little tiny area, one little point, and that becomes very thin. It heats up and then boom, you burn right through that quicker than let's say a flat panel. So you have to be conscious when you're working on these tight little pointy areas. Now, with that said, unfortunately, these areas can't be fixed with just regular detailing. They'll need to be repainted at a body shop. We just inspected the paint and you can see uh, this needs a little bit of love for sure. It's a daily driver. Musto loves it. He just bought it, etc. Mm -hmm. Now you've mentioned things like residue control. You've mentioned things like mow down techniques. Those have changed the way that we think about detailing cars. While we were doing this, you said, yeah, you know what? Uh, I think we should frame this car. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I think we should. Fr What's framing <laughs> well, the vehicles? It was obvious that the paint has been polished in some areas too too much. Oh yeah, around they're here. Yeah, they're compromised. They're burned through. Yeah. And while the body is great and the paint's in good shape, we could spend all day on that. But if we just had a day to make this car look which as we best do, we as have one could, day on this. We have one day. Then I would take most of the time, take it away from the the paintwork. Don't worry about making that perfect and spend the time on the framing of the paint or the framework or framing it. The rubber trim, the plastic, there's wax in the cracks, the tail lights and the tail lenses, they have uh, wax residue. All this stuff, we're gonna make that look as good as it can and the, and the car in, in, in entirety will look so much better that you'll think it's almost new. So that's the idea of framing. Next, Kevin and Derek work with Mike to set expectations and of course to set the game plan for our framing with the limited time that we have. You're, you're pointing out stuff that I didn't even know existed. Right. <laughs> well, this all, your, your subconscious picks up on those things and you go, yeah. oh, it's a nice car, kind of been yeah, used and abused. Kind of when we're done, they're gonna say, this car's phenomenal. What a shame that happened to this right. perfect car. With that, Mike moved his car into the wash bay. Hey. Remember, you got a microphone on, I got earphones. earphone. Every whisper I, I know, can hear. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> While we unpacked Kevin's truck. I've been lucky enough to detail a lot of cars with Kevin Brown, and when he brings his tools, he brings them all. It might be a little bit of overkill, but better to have it than not. Of course. <laughs> when we did the McLaren F1 GTR, his entire truck and bed were full to the brim with equipment, so we had everything we could possibly imagine. 
Step one was to fill the paint and wheel buckets with soap and tools, and one extra bucket with just water and compressed air as our blowout station for later on. Mike lives in the San Francisco area and obviously drove all the way down to LA to see Matt and the WCCS, so you can tell that there's bugs and dirt all over the car, but first we started with the wheels. In true Derek fashion, the microfiber towel is used to get behind the spokes. Now, don't be afraid to push the car backwards or forwards just a little bit to get better access to the calipers and the inner barrel, especially if that caliper is super close to the wheel. Next, I rinsed the paint while Kevin filled a spray bottle with a few squeezes of brute and a little bit of water. Then he set up his toothbrushes. Now, normally this really isn't like noteworthy, but because he's the best kind of crazy, he prunes his brushes based on where they've been used. Yes, you've heard me correctly. Flat or shorter for seams and trim, and the longer and round ones for lug nuts and deeper crevices. As I said, he's a very special kind of crazy. <laughs> Okay, at this point, the tires and wheels have been cleaned and the paint has just been rinsed. We're gonna go ahead and transition to cleaning the framework, the rubber, the plastic, the windshield wipers, and those type of areas. To do that, we're gonna use Brute Wheel Soap that is diluted. Okay, I've wet the area down and I'm gonna scrub those with just a pair of brushes, either an old toothbrush that I cut off the bent and uh, damaged bristles so that it's more stiff and shorter so it's more strategic. I can get right on the edge with it. Just like that. And I'm using my finger and thumb as a guide right on the rubber. See that? No chance of getting onto the paint. And this step will help eliminate oxidized or dead rubber and plastic and also dried on waxes, etc. In these areas, I'll spray a liberal amount of the car wash or wheel wash solution and stick the bristles in there. And no risk of the, the brush, the wood, or the metal uh, doing any damage because I use some heat shrink tubing on this very inexpensive but effective brush. There's times when I'll use an all-purpose water-based cleaner or detergent, but they have the potential to etch sensitive paints. So I'm going to avoid that risk and just use a concentrated wheel wash solution and just do a little more scrubbing. Also keep in mind, Kevin, Derek, and I are at Matt's facility to help educate and train his employees on the fundamentals of car care and, of course, detailing and so on, so that all his parking customers can have the best car care possible when they're in storage. Now, if you're not as crazy as Kevin is and you don't have any brushes or you're near sensitive paint, you can actually use the scrubbing and cleaning power of microfiber in the seams. Framing is by far the most overlooked aspect of detailing because it's focused on all the small stuff no one sees at first without looking really closely. However, the accumulation of all that small stuff eventually adds up into a sizable change that is critical to a vehicle being judged. So to do it on a streetcar that's not being judged can be considered way over the top, but not if you're left with very few options for paint restoration like this one here. Don't forget the doors. Underneath and in the hinge areas, they'll hold a ton of junk, especially because they're not regularly cleaned. Framing is really just working on areas that are not painted, or maybe they're painted and they're in like the door jam type areas. It's almost like the supporting actor to the star of the show. My suggestion at first is just to focus on one area, let's just say the driver's side door jam, for example, during your next wash. Spend 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever it is, and when you're done, you'll feel like a million bucks. Each next wash, pick a new area and work your way around the car until you're done. If you don't want to spend, let's say, five hours framing in one shot, this is a good approach during your normal or regular wash routine. Because we are only here for one day and we have three guys, we did all of the framing now for obvious reasons. Derek used a white scrub pad on the inner wheel wells to remove the heavy dirt, while Kevin worked on the exhaust pipes by hand and a toothbrush with plum wheel cleaner. Next, we bathe the paint and seams before another power wash to carry the dirt away. And man, a lot more came off than you might think after this intense scrubbing. Now with the trim clean, Kevin showed me something I'd never seen before. 
polishing rubber trim with water-based compound and a toothbrush. The man is insane and absolutely amazing at the same time. I love it. I've never seen this before. Take notes. We just finished scrubbing all of the rubber and plastic trim with Brute Wheel Soap. Now, once we look at the rubber, it's pretty clean, but there's still some of that rubber or oxidation that did not come off. So what we're going to do is kind of unorthodox. Well, it's very unorthodox. We're going to apply a paint polishing compound and agitate it on the rubber. And if it gets on the paint, well, it's paint safe, so I'm not too concerned about that. Very natural looking and about as good as you're going to get it. And you can see it's removing rubber. Now I could scrub and scrub and it'll keep removing rubber. So we just want to do what's reasonable and then we'll check our work by just rinsing it away. After the rubber restoration, which are words I've never said before, I removed the old clear bra with hot water and it fought me the entire way. There was also some random PPF on the front side of the door edges and a couple other places as well. Okay guys, as you can hear, uh, Derek and Kevin are polishing the car. We're still playing around a few things. I've been spending most of my time removing the bra. Uh, and we have some leftover glue, but again, I'm out in California, so I don't have rapid remover. One of the uh, guys, Clinton, is going to get some 3M uh, remover there. In the meantime, I'm measuring the paint. Now, we did a little bit of this quick stuff before. As you can see, the hood, 6.3, so it's around 5.5, 6. I've tested this a bunch. It's pretty good. That's about what I would call normal. Now, come over here. If I measure the side here, you start getting into the threes. When you start getting into the threes, uh, we start having a little bit more concern. And it makes sense, there's 4.2, getting better. 3.6, oh my gosh, like we're really getting close. Now, come over here even further. Kevin's working on some spots and we're basically trying to figure out uh, you know, our technique for polishing the car. If I go into the door jam here, now look at this, 2.7. So if we go 2.7 and here's the burned area, 2.6, does that make sense? So if in here is between two and a half, maybe three, a little bit less than three, this is clearly a spot that's been burned through. So that's why in some of the examples I've given before, you have a rule of thumb, you measure the paint and then you measure the door jam. It is not by any means definitive. It is not the exact way of doing it, but it helps you give an idea, hey, we don't have a whole lot. So if this is two and a half ish, 2.7, and now I measure this and it's four or 4.1, we got a little bit of paint there. So the spread between the two of them 3.9, you have about a mil or so. Typically the rule of thumb is anything less than four, you really wanna be kind of careful. Anything that gets into the threes, in my opinion, you don't necessarily wanna polish. This is the perfect, this is the quintessence, the perfect example of that. Down here, you can see paint is missing. We, the more and more we go through here, somebody polished this probably with a rotary, and this is uh, a part that sticks out a whole bunch, burned right through. So we have this, everywhere so this is why this is making this car a little bit more challenging to do but uh yeah uh we got to keep going and maybe re give a little bit of a facelift here but we don't have a whole lot of paint to work with now because the bra was so old the glue stayed on the paint which means it's going to be a huge pain in the butt to get off so we sent clinton out to pick up 3m glue remover from a local paint supply shop while i was waiting for the adhesive solvent to arrive i noticed kevin running into an issue on the passenger side paint that was like glue we apply a, a buffing liquid to the pad or the paint and we start to polish and that spreads between the pad and the paint. Some of that rolls around and, and abrades that way. Some of it sticks to the pad and kind of acts like a, essentially a, a disc, a grinding disc, a sanding disc. But eventually when you start getting enough debris, um, this pad starts to compress it and press it against the soft paint. So what happens is the softer material is going to absorb all of your abrasives and paint residue. See how sticky that is? Mm. Normally if I did that, which we wouldn't normally do on perfected paint, but normally I would just be able to remove it just by dragging my hand across. This has been embedded 
either because the paint is soft or it's warmed up and it's kind of warm. What we would normally do is use more polish, keep it more fluid. But when we do that, we increase the cut as well. We'll get it. We'll get it figured out. So this is what I was alluding to at the beginning of the episode. Now, I've had the privilege of detailing a lot of cars with Kevin over the years. Barry Maguire's Ford GT, a ton of SEMA cars, Matt's Lamborghini, F1 GTR, and on and on and on. But I never saw him fight paint this much before. On this particular attempt, he tried a few squirts of polish in the water bottle, that trick that he showed me a few years ago on the black Porsche, and that worked for me on that particular car, but would it work here? Nope, didn't like it. Just about then, Clinton arrived with the cans of solvent, and at the same time, Tom Palancia from Simonize rolled in from a training session down the street in LA, so that was fortuitous. But I put him to work helping to remove all the old glue from the nose of the Porsche while I cleaned the old compound overspray on the front grill with a toothbrush that we missed earlier. After increasing and decreasing the polish, adding water to the polish, then more supplemental wetting agents, then rotary, and now basic porter cable on the passenger side, we are still having problems with the paint. So we had to regroup and discuss what was going on to see what we may have missed until we had the epiphany. So why was it getting so sticky and how did you- The heat from the lamps. Yeah. We moved them back, Elegant. that panel cooled down and my whole world changed. So that, uh, that really made that panel Im almost impossible to finish down. And it's kind of warm and it, everything was sticking. Once it cooled, I, I went to the, worked on the bumper too. And then I transitioned over to this door and it just went like butter. So that's what the big thing that changed for me was pulling the lights back and the heat just changed everything. The panel cooled and it tightened up and was able to buff it out like I couldn't before. Unbelievable. Yep. All right, so we have a few more steps to do. Yep. Right now, uh, we're gonna come back tomorrow. It's now time to go eat some food. We're gonna start again, so see you tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay, it's the start of day two. Now a little quick recap of what we're gonna do today and finish this up for Mike. Now last night we figured out that heating up the paint with those huge halogen lights that are over there, see them right there, uh, was actually heating up the paint so much that it was causing some issues. So what we did is, took the lights off obviously let it cool down a little bit then we compounded everything we took out all the scratches now this kind of interesting step that we're going to take is we're going to go in and work on the framing which means at all the little pieces all the little trim pieces inside the door frames all around here down below there uh, just looks like junk why because we compounded and there's compounding dust everywhere plus it just being old and it's a used car etc so we're going to do that now then afterwards, we're gonna go in and polish. Why? Because the polishing part isn't gonna make a ton of dust and isn't gonna cause issues. You can see Mike over there, he's taking off uh, the uh, Porsche emblem as well. So we have a ton of work to do. We have four hours left before I gotta hop on a plane and go. So that's kind of the unique process that we're going through right now. For those of you taking notes, our first framing technique was really just about cleaning. Now the second framing technique is really focused on rejuvenation and protection before we final polish. cleaning your tread right now. You realize I have to drive this home, right? With all the detailing done, we final polished with M210 and a yellow foam pad. Afterwards, I coated the wheels with Gillette Pro and Clinton buffed off with a microfiber towel. Mm -hmm. 
Then I coated the paint in reflex with the WCCS team as they use it on their customer cars who are looking for longer term protection. So be sure to ask Matt if you're in LA and need your paint reflexed. While we were applying the last layer of protection, I noticed Kevin using 210 polish to clean up the glass for a brightened appearance. Now, this will remove any overspray from the dressings of the compound or whatever we used previously. And of course, in typical Kevin fashion, I was like, well, I've never seen this before. What are you doing? This is crazy. It's amazing. Then he repeated the same steps on the exhaust tips as well with a microfiber towel. Again, the small details are absolutely everything on a car with paint that can't really withstand any more substantial polishing. Instead, we focused on what we could do, which was framing. All right, guys, well, we're all done with Musto's car. It took uh, mm. two days to do. It looks a thousand times better, but we learned a ton of things. Come over here, let's chat with Kevin. All right, Kev, yeah. this was quite the project for sure. Give me a little bit of recap of what we encountered and then what's the learning process that you know we went through well this? we we originally thought we were going to focus on paint correction mm -hmm. but it transitioned into detailing you know we, we we decided that the paint had already been uh buffed too much over its life and yeah. we couldn't restore certain areas so let's just give it a nice polished job get it coated and protected and focus on things like the rubber and the mirrors and the fender wells and the tread detailing Right? Yeah. Going so, back to the beginning, not every person is capable of polishing their own paint right. or wants to, but they all want a clean car, right? And you can spend the time to, to get a toothbrush and some cleaner and clean the rubber, the door jams, uh, the tires, the wheels. And if you can't get it all done in one day, well, you've got a few weekends, right? So for an enthusiast, this is detailing. And we just focused on the framework of this car. I spent two hours just on the door frames, inside the mirror. I mean, you want to go nuts and have that therapeutic feeling you don't necessarily need to do uh, paint correction. So that's, that's, that's right. the aha moment I yeah, had. The car looks stuff. great. The paint looks, looks pretty good too, mm. but we focused on everything else and look at it. It looks dynamite. We do have one last thing to do. We gotta go get Musto, bring him in here, show him his baby. Okay. He's been out at some appointment or whatever. And uh, I think he had to go get something, some bolts or something. And we need to put this back on his car. I'm gonna let him do that. So uh, I'll give him a call right now and open up the door and bring him in. Great. Come on. Did you guys do the rubber too? Yeah, the rubber came out. This really was nice. all white and mm -hmm. oxidized. Mm -hmm. We spent quite a bit of time on that stuff. Oh my God, all this was all white. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Oh my God, it feels like a different car. But you clean the inside well, of the fender well? Mm -hmm. you know, Dude, rubber, crazy. Dude, it. he's a crazy man. That's like cleaner than my house. And it'll stay clean longer when you wash it and rinse it. You just soap it up, rinse it out. Dirt doesn't stick like it once did. Car looks lower, looks cleaner, looks new. So those are the kind of things that we did that you may not pick up immediately, but subconsciously makes you just say, wow, is this new or? I do have one last say. thing for you to do though. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the <emblem. laughs> Took that off too. All right, so we pulled the car outside. Of course, you got Musto back there. You have Matt Farah, and we're at Matt's building, and the car looks absolutely amazing. If you have any questions, you know where to find me, ammonyc.com. It is crazy bright, so that's why we're pulling it outside so we can see it. Uh, huge thank you to Kevin Brown. Huge thank you to Derek Bemis, and of course, all the guys at WCCS. Uh, it's just been a blast. Super excited to be out here. Uh, glad that I can get his car all cleaned up, and I'm jealous of the drive home. He's got about a four or five hour ride home back to San Francisco. I love doing stuff like this. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.